Hello everyone, I'm Joe and today it's time for me to do my January 2018 reading wrap up. January was a really good reading month and a really good start to the year because I read 15 books in total with an interesting variety of both authors, genres and some very interesting and unusual ideas in that mix. And without further delay I'll get straight on to talking about the books. And the first of which is The Gradual by Christopher Priest. Now this is classed as literary fiction and this is a very unusual and bizarre book in terms of the subject and the writing style because Christopher Priest has a very unique and a very mm, alternative writing style I like to think. And I like his writing but it does take a bit of getting used to and this book as well does take a little bit of getting used to. The premise is that there is this kingdom uh, uh, and well, nation state, I should say, and in this nation state, there's a family, and this family has two sons. Both sons are musically gifted, and one of these sons, when they get a little bit older, into their tenure, is drafted into the military to go and have this war that um, is been going on for many years, and nobody really knows who, exactly even who they're fighting exactly. It's just a sort of strange circumstance. And the other brother is not drafted, he manages to avoid it and he then becomes um, a composer and is very well known and well respected. Several years later he then asked to go on a musical tour of this chain of island, uh, an archipelago. And these islands, he's known about them for years, you can see them from the shoreline of where he lives using a telescope but nobody is normally allowed to go there for reasons it's never exactly explained. And he does go there, he plays music with a group of others, and then he returns. And it goes from there, that's all I'm going to say, because things aren't quite what he thinks they used to be. When he left, things were in one way, and when he returns, things aren't quite the way he left them in a very drastic way, in some ways other things are very similar so he's not sure what's going on and it's a very strange concept and it deals with time and our perception of time in particular and I did like it but it does take a bit of getting used to because frankly all um, Christopher Priest books do take a little bit of getting used to because he's got a very unique writing style. The second book that I read was Peril at End Health by Agatha Christie this is a Hercule Poirot novel, this is a crime and mystery novel and frankly I shouldn't have to say too much about the idea of this because it's extremely well known, Hercule Poirot is. He is a Belgian detective, he has come over to England many years previously and basically every book he gets involved and asked to solve some form of crime, whatever that may be. And this one is when one day he realises that a young woman who is staying at the same um, sort of English holiday um, resort as him has had a very close call with an assassination attempt and he obviously wants to solve this before well she actually does indeed get murdered because you know there's a bullet hole in her hat and things are not um, all mysterious and obviously he then proceeds to try and solve the crime as best as he can and use his little brain uh, grey cells and this is just another really good Oakley Christian novel and a really good Hercule Poirot novel. I really enjoyed it. There's not much to say about it because it's just, it's, all, it's formulaic in some ways, but it's not because every book has its own little quirks and every book is just brilliant. I really like the Hercule Poirot novels and I will be reading as many of these as I can get my hands on, frankly, in the upcoming months and over this year. The next three books I read on my Kindle so I will put pictures up on the screen. And those are Envy of Angels, Lost Lock and Pride Spell, all by Matt Wallace. Now these three books are the first three, well novellas I should actually call them because they are, they're actually shorter than the normal books, in the Cindy Dura series. This is a seven book series and currently six of them are out. The seventh book will be released in April so I have not long to wait and indeed I will be reading books four, five and six in the next month or so, not entirely sure when. And these are just really fun and fast paced and really 
interesting fantasy novellas. Now, they are urban fantasy. They are based around a catering company and the sole contract for this catering company is a government department that deals with demonic uh, diplomacy, basically. And so they have to supply some really unusual and pretty freaky sounding food to uh, various demonic banquets and diplomatic sort of functions. And obviously, considering there's demon involved, things are not always as they seem. Various people try to eat other people or other creatures because some of them are obviously not even vaguely human. And it's just mad, frantic, and just really fun all three of these are. And the cast of characters as well, the way they interact, and the quite bizarre characters as well. I think it's really interesting and I am very happy to have read, started reading these and I will be continuing on with them because they are just really really fun overall. The next two books are The Robots of Dawn and Robots on Empire, both by Isaac Asimov. These are books 3 and 4 in the Robot series, of which there are 4 in total, and these mark the last sort of official dedicated robots books that Asimov wrote. After this, there are more books in the Robots universe, but that kind of starts evolving into the Foundation universe, which is obviously added to of that well-known series. And these two books in particular, these are marking that transition from the pure robot-based books into the Foundation. And indeed, when Asimov started writing the first um, short stories within the Robot universe, and the first novel, and then he wrote the first Foundation book, Initially, he did not uh, write them in the same universe, and then as time went by, he realised what he could do with them, and he had more ideas, and they became of well, these two novels, which then merge and sort of turn into the Foundation universe in a really interesting way. They are science fiction. This is a future um, sort of humanity where we are now relying very heavily on robots. They are able to think for themselves to a certain degree, although they are governed by the three laws of robotics, which are obviously made famous by the most uh, well-known of the robots books, which is I, Robot, which is actually a short story collection, in fact, though not an actual full-length novel. And I just really enjoyed these. They're well-written. They're more interesting and actually a lot more humour than you'd think, considering it's Asimov. I mean, I used to think years ago that Asimov wouldn't be as amusing as he is, but actually he is, he's got a very particular sense of humour which I like. And they're just interesting and lead on to the Foundation universe in an interesting manner. And now I'm really very keen to uh, reread the Foundation trilogy and indeed the other Foundation books and sort of see where this all goes in the end because it is leading to an interesting place. I next read The Garden of Evening Mists by Tan Tuan. Thing. Now for me this is a very unusual book because as far as genre goes this is completely different from anything I have usually read and indeed I don't actually think I've read anything like this in the four years I've been on booktube because this is historical fiction. Now this is set in the highlands of Malaya and it's basically a young woman who was a prisoner in the war sets out to build a monument for her sister who was killed in the death camps and she becomes basically an apprentice of this man and this man was the former um, head gardener for the Emperor of Japan, Emperor Hirohito and he knew him quite well and this is a interesting concept and not one I've come across before as you know I don't read books like this as a rule this was one that I brought if, uh, about two years ago as a bit of an experiment and I finally got around to reading it and suffice to say this experiment worked out well because I wasn't sure if I'd like this at all because again it's so different but I really did I had really interesting writing the plot was not as um, fast paced and as sort of obvious and sort of as big as what a lot of books are that I often read are this was more subtle and nuanced and the characters were more, I want to say smaller, but they were more normal, so to speak, 
I'm aware that's a terrible way of describing it, but you know, they've got no unusual things about them. They're just very normal people in a bad situation, and they're trying to live their life and get things done. And I just really did enjoy this book. It was different and just a refreshing change. And I will be reading more by this author in the future because I know he has written several other books. So I'll definitely be looking into them and seeing what they're about. So next up is a series of the SF Masterworks books, Yellow Spines. And the first of those is Martian Time Slip by Philip K. Dick. Now this is an interesting and rather bizarre book, although Except this is Philip K. Dick, bizarre and unusual is frankly the normal for him. This is set on Mars and it's become a sort of retreat from Earth and it's become kind of a bit of an outcast society because Earth went there to, to get resources from it and it's not turning out quite the way they think. Uh, isolated little um, settlements of houses and sort of villages essentially on Mars have now be, uh, started to grow though. But they're not doing as well because certain things are in control by certain people in particular water so uh, whoever owns the ability to control water and indeed maintain the plumbing so basically the plumbers rule mars which is rather unusual but does make actually sense and it is uh, about one guy in particular uh, arnie cut and his plumbing union he is a kind of a kind of an underworld type figure almost. You know, he's got fingers in all the pies, as you might say. You know, both legal and illegal. And it's about another man called Jack Bolan who becomes involved with him against his will, and it's just really weird. It deals with time and in really weird ways. And I don't want to want to say too much because it isn't a very big book, but it's weird and bizarre. And I liked it, but I didn't love it, frankly, for Dick, which is the case with him so far. It's been sort of 50 50 whether I like his books. Some of them are brilliant, some of them are mediocre. This is a mediocre one, but it's still worth reading if you like Philip K. Dick, which I obviously do. The next masterwork is The Shrinking Man by. Richard Matheson. This was one of the books that I got as a Christmas present, in fact, for my sister. Now this is an interesting and rather um, simple premise to explain because it is quite simply a guy is on his boat one day in the ocean with his brother-in-law and this weird sort of cloud of stuff appears rushing along, blown by the wind. It hits him, he feels like a weird tingling sensation on his skin, but that's about it. And he realises a few months later that he is now several inches shorter than he used to be because he's about six foot four at the start of the book. And the book is basically, as I will suggest, this cloud has obviously done something to him and he's now losing a very tiny amount of height and overall size per month. So he's just becoming smaller overall, miniaturising every month, month and month. And this has a profound effect on him and indeed his wife because of course after a while he then becomes smaller than his wife and then eventually he starts becoming nearly the same size as his small child who is a toddler and this is both dark in places and very creepy and almost uncomfortable but it's also highly humorous in places as well because he becomes so small that it's, he's sort of having fun with it but he's also getting terrified of his own size and his inability to get things done and obviously people then are treating him kind of as a child but not exactly it's weird but i did like it and it's interesting concept simple but effective frankly and i would recommend this if you want to try something by matheson because some of matheson's other books i know are debatable in terms of quality from what i've heard although i haven't read that many myself this i think is a pretty solid one actually the third and final sf masterwork is doomsday book by connie willis now this is the first book in the Oxford Time Traveller series of which there are four in total and I will be reading the next three in the following three months and this was one that I really really enjoyed and the premise of it is relatively simple as such it is a woman called Kivrin who is a uh, 
historian, uh, a history student I should say, in Oxford, but the way they do history in Oxford in this world is a little bit different because instead of just studying books and things, they actually have the ability to time travel, as the series might now might suggest, and go back and study history as it is happening. And obviously they have to be very careful not to interfere too much, obviously because they can still be hurt and indeed you could technically still die in the past, which is weird and brings up some interesting concepts of paradoxes, which as yet hasn't been brought into the book too badly, but I'm curious what will happen with paradoxes in the other three books. This is one where Kivrin, I think she's only in this book, in fact, I think it's different sets of characters in the other three books, is meant to be sent to 1320, which is just before the Black Death uh, ravages the entire of Europe and kills millions of people. But, unsurprisingly, because it's in the name of the book, something goes wrong and she's sent 20 years after that, right at the start of the Black Death, when everybody is indeed dying from it. And then there is a race against time because there is some sort of weird flu epidemic going on in the current future world, you know, in Oxford itself. There is a Black Death in um, the old England and nobody's sure if it's linked in some way. If it's not linked, is it just coincidental? It's very bizarre and brilliantly well written. It's got humour in the book, in little mouths. It's got some really interesting ideas and it's got some very interesting characters with an overall concept that is frankly fantastic. And I'm very eager to read the next three books in this series because considering what this one is and how uh, much I've thought about this and how much I've talked about this with all people, this series is going to be a very interesting one, a very exciting one. The next book is Austro by Paul McCauley. Now this book is based around the character called Austro. I actually thought that was the location but it's actually somebody's name. And this is a young woman who at the start of the book basically gets persuaded to do a crime. She's actually in prison already but she gets persuaded to when a visitor comes to the prison in a big sort of prison break attempt, she attempts to kidnap a young woman, the daughter of a well-known person. And basically she ends up with this uh, young woman running out of the prison and escaping and then they are on the run from those people that are hunting them down. You know, like the big prison big wig, you know, the, the massive criminal of the place. He wants to get her, obviously the authorities want to recapture her as well and it's quite interesting she's not entirely um sort of standard human as well in this world um she has part of a sort of people that have been genetically modified so she can withstand much lower temperatures and much harsher conditions than normal people and as a result she's sort of looked down on because this is considered a fairly sort of brutal and sort of simple sort of stupid ways you know they're kind of considered like neanderthals or something you know like they're human as such but they're quite sort of simple big folk yeah you know, not really intelligent and cultured and it's quite an interesting premise the characters are interesting the way the plot moves along and the pacing is really good and overall i just really did enjoy this book this is only the second book by macaulay that i've read but it won't be the last because this was a interesting book and one that I did enjoy so I would recommend this quite heavily. The next two books are ebooks I'll put pictures up on the screen and those are River of Teeth and Taste of Mavo both by Sarah Gailey. Now these are classed as urban fantasy I believe and these are set in an alternative America where the American government thought it would be a good idea to introduce hippos to the Louisiana Bayou, basically, as a source of easy food. Because then, once they breed and become um, spread a bit, you, you can then send hunters in, they would kill the hippos easily, and you know, you've got this really good meat source. And it does work to a degree, but the hippos aren't quite as easy to manage as people thought. And basically, this is an alternative where instead of horses in the Wild West, you've got hippos in the Wild West. The cowboys are no longer riding horses, 
dividing hippos which sounds really bizarre and it frankly is but it works extremely well because they're fun the fast paced the action is really good the characters are interesting and varied and have real motivation for doing what they're doing it is a host of sorts in the first book and then the second book is the aftermath of that and what goes on afterward because of it and both books work together really well this is meant to be only a duology there shouldn't be any more so this in theory should be it although once i there could be well another it's in this world maybe with different characters i would not complain about that because this world and the ideas in it were fantastic and i just really enjoyed these uh, novellas because oh by the way they are indeed novellas because they're only about 180 ish pages uh, each and the final thing that i read was fantasy and science fiction magazine the january and february 2018 issue now i took out a special offer for a year subscription to this magazine for all of 2018 this is a bi-monthly magazine so i've now got uh, issues for the whole of the year five pound which is extremely good and i took this out because of rachel suggested um made me aware of the offer on twitter and it just sounded quite interesting so i thought i'd test it out and as is always the case with uh, short story magazines sometimes some issues can be really interesting some can be pretty average some can be terrible depending on the quality of the short stories within it this was a okay one most of the stories in it were okay but nothing special but there was one short story which i stupidly forgot to make a note of and indeed i can't tell you what the name is now but this one story is about um sort of upper class english society and cannibalism in victorian england which is interesting and very dark and grim but also humorous and that story frankly made this whole um issue a bit higher than it would have been because without it this issue would have been a little bit flat frankly and i wouldn't have enjoyed the overall issue that story massively improved it i thought because it was really fun and had some really interesting ideas and some sort of interesting questions on morality as well which is interesting for a short story and with that said that is it for all of the uh, books i read in january if you've read any of these or you would like to then please leave a comment and we can have a discussion if you have any suggestions based on any of these you know because i'm always happy and indeed eager to read new books new authors then please leave a comment as well with that said that is it for this video all my social media links can be found in the description box below as always with that that is it so thank you for watching and i'll see you another day bye for now